Good day. I'm wearing this hat because it's freaking cold outside. It's like minus 25 in Canada, land of Canada. And uh, anyways, take the hat off. I'm Gadget NDA. Um, I'm actually talking with a log cabin in the middle of the wilderness. It's too freaking cold. Have a snow snow day. Hide in the cabin. Big fire. Lots of cheer. Anyways, morning. Um, what I want to do today is show you uh, how to put together a really interesting uh, concept called camera matching. It's one of my favorite things to do in 3D. Uh, um, anyways, the uh, um, the power of it's it's amazing with the respect to taking one photo. Usually, it's a three-quarter perspective, and what that means is uh, that your buildings are slightly turned a bit. So I'm going to demonstrate some techniques for this. And uh, uh, first thing I'm going to do is uh, change my layout. In Max, uh, if you look at perspective and go to configure, let's get started here and change our layout. It's, uh, it's a little uh, tab in here. And, and I like going two screens in this one. It's a rare time. And, and uh, anyways, uh, you get the front view on the right and the top. I like the perspective in this case. And I'll tell you why in a few minutes. Key is a camera match is that you need to set up your uh, your background here, and uh, one of the few times ever in my years of teaching 3D is that I actually go into the views menu and go to viewport viewport background and actually go in the viewport background and add an image. And what I'm going to do is add an image of a log cabin. In your case, it'll be hopefully a similar image. Um, now the keys here are the three steps. You match the bitmap to the viewport. You make sure it's locked and zoom, and the display background is selected on. And that's it to bring your image in here. I'm gonna hit G, and that turns off the grid. So there's my cabin. Now what's weird about the uh, the lock is that you can move in and out, which is normally you couldn't do, and that's why you have to lock the zoom in and out. Because when you're working with camera match, it's got to be particularly um, set up. Now another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually put in the materials editor the same image. Um, I've done this many times, and I'll show you why. I'm going to make it put in a bitmap, bit map, and we're going to bring in log cabin. You do it in, bring this in for a couple reasons. Again, I'm going to show you as a 2D image on a 3D block, so if you can go in here. And there's your log cabin view. Now, if we ro close all the rollouts, go to the maps, there's your log cabin. And if you look at it, um, there's the log cabin view. And if you go right click, you can actually get a lot of information. In my case, it's 2048 by 1536. That's the pixel resolution 2048 pixels by 1536. So, ideally, you have to render setup to 2048 by 1536 and that maintains your aspect ratio of 1.33 and I'll just lock that um, so you have to set up the proportions for your background and your um, when you're rendering so that you can camera wrench effectively now the key is, is that okay we're dealing with the box it's a cabin here okay so we can just guide ourselves here a little bit and then we've got a box okay and we got a little river here, so I don't know. Let's go in the top view here, just temporarily, and and uh, it's act a little pond. It's actually what it is, and we'll just do a little pond here. So we got two really simple reference objects. Now these aren't very accurate. I mean, they look kind of proportional a bit. This has to be ro rotated a bit, um, but it gives us a little guide. I guess it's a it's a placeholder guide we call it. Now the key is the objectives here. One we have to create camera match reference helpers and these are points that will establish the perspective view. And then we have to set the image, the one image to align each point from this corner to this corner and actually the camera will automatically match the view. So let's go. 
and it doesn't happen always in the first try, so don't be discouraged. So I'm going to go into Dummy Helpers under the Creation Panel, under Camera Match, Cam Points, and what I'm going to do is in this view, a snap on, very important, right click snap and, put, and select vertex, right click snaps, because if you notice a snap to this point, so what I'm going to do is I always start in a counterclockwise direction, so I'm going to select say the edge of the um, edge of the pond, maybe uh, maybe this point here, and this point of the cabin, and then maybe here, and then back of the cabin. Okay, so that's five points, and 90% of the time those five points work, and so you can see them cam points here they are, one to five. Now I take my snap off, and then I look. I said, well, only oh, geez, I got one, two, three in the same plane on the elevation zero. Well, they're a little bit lower, so maybe I'll bring these down a bit. Okay? We don't have to worry too much right now. Bring them down just a bit. You don't want three points in the same plane. Okay? And I think that's pretty good. And you save at this point. So I'm going to call this camera match. Camera match. So in this view, um, the idea is that I have to take all these helpers. Just let me turn these off for now. I have to take the helpers I created here, the 3D points. They're called camera helpers. And match them to a 2D image. How do I do that? Well, Max buried a nice little utility under the hammer here called camera match. And each point can be assigned a position. So I know where they were, but for, for the sake of confusion, I'll just show you the helpers again. And ignore the helpers in this viewport. Just concentrate on the helpers in this perspective viewport. Because you can get confused. So what I'm going to do is use camera point one. And I always know where you started. Go sign position. One's about here. And you get this little uh, warning. And if you don't set your render properly, you'll get a pretty nasty result. And go just go uh, yes and nothing happens because I set my render rate. Uh, but basically what that's telling you that it's trying to render properly the rendered output to match the image on the camera match. So number two, use this point it's about here, three use this point about here, and four use this point and go about here, and five use this point and go here in the cabin. If we're lucky, um, all we got to do is we go down with these five points assigned counter counterclockwise, uh, create camera, and voila, this is the problem. Here, I'll leave in this corner, maybe. Oop. And let's bring this one up in the bank a bit. Another thing, too, this one might be so close that it might be really messing up, too. I've seen that happen. Maybe I'll bring this one, because it's so close to the the, cam the camera focal point. I'll bring it over here to the right. See, it looks right along this. This is on the bush. So this one's on the pond. This is the side of the bush. This one's the top corner, back corner, and one on top of the hill. Try that. Again, so you can see how little touchy it is. Let's try this again. We'll just make sure... And this one here, two, over in the bush, three, here, four, here, and five up here. So I've redefined those. Let's see this time. No, still got the same air. So I'm going to bring this one down. up a bit. Let's try this. It's, got, <coughs> it's one, two, three, four. So three is there. Four is here. And away you go. So <coughs> as you can see it takes a lot of a few bit of time and I'm still in the front viewport and again I hit C. Now I got the camera. And if you look it's it's almost there. Okay? If you bring it down a bit, you can see, okay, well, something's going on 
on here. It's getting close. I'm getting some scale. So I'm going to add an increment here. Move my cabin a little closer to where it's supposed to be. Bring it up and then elevation. And you can see very closely. And, it's, and most of the times I only have to tilt the camera slightly to adjust. And my perspective on the on here was really bad. So I'm going to start doing some proper lines here. What I'm doing right now, it's hard to believe, but I'm actually creating um, my 3D pond outline. And I get the proper perspective. Okay, I can delete my old one. <coughs> so basically what I'm doing is taking and refining what's in the real world. Um, let's go out of here. Our line here for a minute. <coughs> Take my old one out. And this is the real pond. And this here is the real cabin. Now the cabin you can tell is a lot smaller than what it should be. So we're going to make it scale out. Like that. A width. Get the picture. <laughs> no pun intended. But anyways, uh, you can have the cabin form, and, and basically what you're going to start, if you look here, there's a cabin on top of the hill. I can actually design the hill, so I can call this cabin, and start building this whole scene exactly where it was in perspective. Very difficult concept, love it. it does take some tweaking. It usually doesn't take three times, but it's a really good scenario for you to see. So that's camera matching, 3D elements, and a cabin. What's great too with this, I can have someone running around the cabin and use a lot of camera match principles to such as matting and and even have someone running up to the cabin inside of it um, in the photo. Um, so there's a lot of neat camera match moving techniques that we can get into and but I thought I'd demonstrate the uh, um, real cool aspects of cabin making. And just to show you some more spline techniques is that I can actually start to build the train and Max has a really cool train tool that you can show um, the train it's called the uh, uh, composite tool compound tool rather called train and you can pick your terrain and actually start building really cool terrain and just to show you here there's the nice um, terrain tool around them. Anyways, that's my uh, little spiel um, on camera matching. Hope you uh, learned something today and have a good day. Take care.